have just gotten back to Hunabeth's temple, and I am beat. But I figure, um, before I go in there, I'm gonna fix up these creeper holes and stuff, and maybe try to <laughs> butter her up a little bit. Oh, this cake? Nothing in there. Okay. I feel bad about this, though. I mean, creepers blew up all over the place, left it a rat hole. It looks horrible in here. I still have not been up there. Maybe there's something cool up there. I have to see later. But I'm kind of on a schedule at the moment. You know what I think I'm going to do? I could uh, cook this. That's what I could do. Okay. I should probably have made some stone bricks, but that's okay. That's it's fine. As long as I can just kind of make it not look like crap in here, I think we'll be okay. Okay. Oh, boy. Ah, oh, Unabeth. Unabeth, excuse me. I mispronounced your name. I'm so sorry. I'm back. Look, 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 I found something cool. So, uh... You ready to give me a hand now? Please. That sucked and I'm never doing it again. You, Una Beth, Oh, Sarah, please. you're back. Oh, thank you. I knew you could do it. Now, as I promised, I will tell you everything I know. In the beginning, there was only oh, the void. No light, no is sound. Is exposition no. really necessary? Uh, yes, it is necessary. Okay. Look, I'm sorry okay. I cut off on you earlier, but we've been dealing with a lot here lately. You want an explanation. So could you please hey, I'm just I'm listen? Oh, I'm sorry. Go on. Go on. It, it's okay. Anyway, there was the void, and it was empty. There was nothing. And I remember this because the first thing that ever existed was me. Oh, wow. Nothing was. And then I was. And I felt such great joy because I was. But I was alone in the void. I had nothing to share that joy with. So I made others like me, pulled them from the void itself, shaped my one wish into brothers and sisters and siblings of indeterminate gender. Oh, yeah, that, that's a thing where I'm from, too, so... Uh, right, right. And for a while we were happy just to exist. But then we grew weary of the emptiness of the void and decided to build something within it. I had spent my one act of creation on my siblings, so they used theirs to create this world. First, Duosric built the sky. He set sun and moon and stars in motion and filled the space between with air. Then Trinable stood upon the deepest depths of the void and sank roots into it. And their roots spread and covered the void in bedrock. And upon the bedrock they heaped dirt and stone and sand, and in these they put all the plants and trees and mushrooms. Next, Quadim went to the low parts of the earth and filled them with water and turned them into lakes and rivers and oceans. In the cold parts of the world, he made ice, and he gave Duosric clouds to hang in the sky to bring rain and snow. And Pantherium saw that the world grew cold and dark at night, so they made fire and lava to keep it warm. And Trinable gave them vast plains of sand, and Pantherium made them deserts. And then, it was Hexilia's turn to create. But she didn't know what to make. There was a sky, and there was land. And there were seas, and there was fire, and the world was vast and beautiful. And then she knew. There was a sky, but no one to gaze at the stars. There was land, but there was nothing to taste the fruits born from it. There were seas and fire, but there was nothing to swim in the water or warm itself in the flames. And Hexilia understood, and she created life. She filled the sky with birds, and made pigs and cattle and sheep, and all the creatures that walked and crawled on the earth, and fish and squids and all the creatures that swam, and even creatures that thrived in the desert. And finally, she made people. Simple people at first. The ones you call testificates. And they built their tiny villages and learned to grow crops and craft and barter their goods. And then, from them, humans began to appear. And the humans built grand cities and beautiful palaces, they learned to dance and sing and create, and in honor of the one who gave them life, they called this world Hexile. And the world was peaceful and full of joy and life, 
a paradise where people could live forever. But then, people began to die. Hexilia was furious when she saw this, for she knew none of us six had created death. Something else must have done it, but I can't imagine who or what would do such a thing, or why. Hexilia sealed the other five of us away from the world then, and told us it was for our protection. But it was when you drove the walkers from my temple that I felt the seal break. And just then I could sense Hexilia's breath of life in their bodies, but it was somehow wrong, corrupted. I don't want to believe it, but I think Hexilia is the one who created the walkers and set them upon the cities of Hexile. Sarah, thank you for purifying my temple and restoring Brightmoor Castle to its former glory. I have told you all I know about what has happened to Hexile, but it hardly seems enough. Here, take this helmet. If you can learn to harness the corrupted souls Hexilia has sent into the world, they can keep it in good repair. My brother Duosric had a temple to the east of the battle tower you conquered. Maybe he will know more if wow. you can find him. Thank you, Annabeth. I really appreciate this. So, okay. Good Thanks luck. again. Goodbye. Bye. I'll see you around. Okay. So what I need to do now... First I'll get back out of here into the sun. Now, um... Apparently this town right here is having some issues. And there's also this town here. So, I think I'm going to go back to the one here, next to the tower. There we go. Okay. All set. Okay, folks. Well, that was an interesting trip. So I am going to make a little journey now, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.